Sometimes we want to create a random number, particularly in creating a game. Maybe we're rolling some dice or drawing cards from a deck. We want to do that randomly. And both VB and C Sharp have a very nice random class that we can utilize in generating. Uh, in this case, we're going to do integers, but we could also do double values or decimal values. On the VB.net side, I'm going to create a new instance of the random class. I'm going to name it RND, and I declare that just like I would a variable. The fact that there are parentheses after the word random means that that's a method, and particularly it's a, it's a constructor method, which we're creating a new instance of that random class. And then I've also got a variable called XYZ, which holds an integer value, and we're going to generate a number between 1 and 100. And so I'm going to take that value XYZ and have it equal my instance of the random class, RND, and it has a method called next. And inside the parentheses for the next method, I can put a value, and here I put 100, and that will generate a number between 0 and 99, or 1 less than that number. I want a number between 1 and 100, so I'm going to add 1 to that. So from 0 to 99, we're going to move it up by 1. Now we're between 1 and 100. C sharp, pretty much the exact same thing. Declaring my instance of random as RND. It's of data type random. Got my XYZ variable, which contains an integer. And then the same statement, XYZ equals RND.next. 100, so I'm going for a value between 0 and 99 and adding 1 to it gives me a value between 1 and 100. So here I'm going to use that code to generate a number between 1 and 100 and I'm going to store those numbers in a list box. Every time I click a number we'll add a number to the list box. Let's take a look at our code. So same code we saw earlier. I'm creating an instance of random named RND. I've got a variable named XYZ which is of an integer data type. And then XYZ equals RND.next 100 plus 1. That will give me a number between 1 and 100. And then I'm going to output that or add that into my items collection of our list box. I'm going to insert it at the top. It's the most recent number will always be at the beginning. And what I'm going to insert is XYZ. I'm going to convert that to a string. I've also got another little method here of string that we haven't looked at yet, and that's called pad left. I'm going to specify, in essence, almost a column that's eight characters, and my value of XYZ is going to appear at the end of those eight characters, and I'm going to put spaces in front of it, so that if I generate a two-digit number, there'd be six spaces. If I generate a one-digit number, there'd be seven spaces, and if I did generate a three-digit number, such as 100, there would be five spaces. Now the other thing I did, I used a monospace font for my list box. I set this to courier, so that every letter and every number is the same width, and everything will line up very nicely. Let me just run my code. So I'm going to click generate a number between 1 and 100. I get 21. Do it again. I get 7, 55, 10, and so forth. And you can see how the, the numbers are all right aligned with some spaces in front. A list box does not have a text align property where we can align the text in it to the right. It's always going to align to the left. So using something like pad left really comes in handy for getting the data displayed the way we want it to. As I generate more numbers, notice I get a scroll bar that I can scroll through the values that were generated. Here is that same project done in C sharp. Same idea of the code. We've got our random number generator, a new instance of that named RND, variable called XYZ, which contains an integer. I'm going to take RND.next 100. That gives me a value between 0 and 99. Add 1 to it, and XYZ will be a random value between 1 and 100. And then I'm going to display that in our list box inserting it at the very top, so item 0, value of XYZ converted to a string, 
and then I'm using that dot pad left to align it on the right in a column of eight characters. So let me execute the program. Click generate a number. I get 77, 62, 64, and so forth. It's generating numbers between 1 and 100. And there's a 100. And there's a 2. I won't bother trying to get a 1, but eventually we would. Here is another Visual Basic project that utilizes the random class, an instance of it. So I have two labels here named LBLDI1 and LBLDI2. I have an image list which contains six images of the dice, die 1 through die 6. These are all PNG files. Have a button named BTN roll and a list box named LST rolls, which we're going to display the rolls as we create them. Have a little uh, record of our rolls. Let's take a look at our button. So I have an instance of the random class, a new instance, and I named it Shooter. I also have five variables that will contain integers, die1, die2, die1 value, die2 value, and total. Die1 is going to contain the index number of the image I'm going to display. That's going to be a value between 0 and 5, along with die2. And then die1 value and die2 value is going to be the face value of that image. So image 0 has a value of 1, and image 5 has a value of 6. And then total is going to be die 1 and die 2 added to the total of our roll. So here's where I'm using the random value shooter. I'm using dot next method. And in parentheses, I have a 6. That's going to generate a number between 0 and 5. Same thing with die 2. And then die 1, I'm going to add 1, 2. To it, to put the value into die 1 value, and my die 2 value is die 2 plus 1. And my total is I'm going to add those two values together. Then we're going to set the image that's being displayed using the image index, and my labels are tied to that image list that contains those dice images. So I'm going to look, change the index, the image index of that label to whatever die 1 is. So if die 1 is 0, that's going to be the dice with the 1 on it. And if, it is, if die 1 is 5, um, it's going to display the dice with 6 on it. And the same thing for my second die, which is LBL die 2. We're going to set its image index. And then we're going to display in our list box. We're going to add to the items there the value of die 1 value. I'm going to change it to a string. And then I have a literal string of a space plus space. Concatenate that with die2 value, convert it to a string. Concatenate to that a literal string of space equals space. And my final concatenation is the value of total as a string. Now I'm using the add, and that's going to add this item into the at the bottom of my list box. So I'm going to also put in a line here that's going to cause that list box to scroll down and select the last item. So the selected index of that list box is going to equal LST rolls .items count. It's going to count how many items there are. Now remember, we we'll start counting with one, but the index start with zero, so I'm going to subtract one. And that will end up highlighting that last line or selecting that last line. Let me run this. So I click the roll on button, and I get 2 plus 6 equals 8, 3 plus 6 equals 9, 3 plus 5 equals 8, 4 plus 4 equals 8, 6 plus 1 equals 7, and so forth. As I generate a, several more rolls, I'm going to eventually get a scroll bar that pops up on that list box, and I can scroll through all of those rolls that were generated. And here's that same project written in C-sharp, exact same interface. Let's take a look at our button. I have a new instance of the random class named Shooter, my five variables. We're going to generate a value between 0 and 5 for each of our two die values, die 1 and die 2. I'm going to increment those by 1. 
and place those values into two more variables called die one value and die two value. Add those together to get my total. We're going to change the image index of our label, the value of die one for the first label, and the value of die two for the second label. And then the list box, we're going to add to the items a concatenated string of die one value, a little string of a plus, our die two value, a little string of an equal sign, and then our total value. And now, as we did in the BB side, I'm going to scroll that list down and highlight the very last line, which was the, the latest roll by getting the count of the items and subtracting one and setting the selected index to that. So let me execute this. And I get 2 plus 2 equals 4, 6 plus 2 is 8, 4 plus 2 is 6, 5 plus 4 is 9, and then we get snake eyes 1 plus 1 equals 2. Again, as I generate a bunch of rolls, we're going to get the scroll bar and we can scroll through all the rolls that were generated.